Hey roleplay fans, it's Dungeon Master Joel here again, getting you up to speed on what you may have missed from the last episode. Our favorite D20 degenerates had taken a job from the famous High Morin gangsters known as the Balor family to reclaim a package that had gone missing on its way to the city. They made their way into the forest, and after some detours in the swamp involving nets, eventually they found the crash carriage they were looking for, but no package to speak of, only blood, drag marks, and some very strange fur and footprints, which only later did Corbin the resident wild man discover belonged to Knowles. It seems that the demonic baddie's very presence was poisoning the surrounding area. When the party tracked the Knowles back to their windmill lair, it quickly became apparent they weren't alone, having grabbed Flip, the wannabe junior gangster who was also trying to join the ranks of the Balor Gang. The mystery thickened too when the party realized that these gnolls were not native to the area around Highmore, and furthermore, they were armed with brand new weapons and armor, all bearing the same insignia, three green leaves inside a circle. A great battle ensued inside the windmill. Corbin grabbed a knoll by the tongue and punched his head off his shoulders. Vorlin cleverly thought to collapse the top part of the structure, and Antoine, recovering from his previous net fiasco, broke the alpha knoll's kneecap with a mace. We now join the adventure not long after this battle. <laughs> the sleeve, I'm not into gas. Let's go. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, at this point, uh, we're tired. That was a great fight. Fuck the guy. Let's go grab some drinks. Uh, again, you guys still haven't come for what you came for, actually, which is the package. Oh, right. He's right. Yeah. I am now going to split apart the hyena leader's skull and use his skull as a gauntlet. Ooh. Use one half on this fist, one half on the other. All right, I'll have, to, I'll have to figure out what that is, is next time. Is the whip still around? Is the whip still around? Can I work this guy over a little bit? Yes, Just... yes, yes it is. It's there where he dropped it. Let's get some answers out of this guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, he's gagged at the oh. moment. I forgot to ask, uh, mm. do any of these mangy, disgusting creatures besides rabies and fleas have anything else on them that we can steal? Uh, all their shit is new. All their weapons are brand new, which is very interesting. They also carry the same maker's mark on them of the three leaves, which uh, actually, hey, uh, roll roll an investigation with advantage on that one there, Vorlin, because you asked. Oh, sweet. Dude. I'm never, rolling, one did bite I'm never rolling with another pair of dice ever again. That's another 20. Okay, so you know exactly what this maker's mark is. This is the Three Leaves Armory over in Treetop. Treetop was the city-state that you actually began in, taking that shitty job uh, loading crates and everything. You pass that place every day. This uh, okay. Is, this is from High Morin's neighboring city, but why the people of Treetop would seemingly be arming gnolls is really fucking crazy. Interesting. Okay, cool. Can I steal any of their shit? Uh, yeah, there's the big-ass glaive there, the pack leader glaive, uh, which uh, definitely looks to be the most interesting of all of them. He clearly customized it and put a bunch of shit on it. There's the machete that the guy dropped, the whip that the guy dropped, that look uh, brand new, but just look normal. Um... Honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna play it for the guys, dude. Like, I'm gonna look at Corb and kind of, like, point to the glaive and be like... Interesting. Oh no, I got I got his skull. That's all I want. I got That's my skull. All right. Now, now we uh, might cool. have to retcon this later, but you took the dueling speciality, uh, Corbin, which means you actually do better and get higher numbers when you're fighting with something only in one hand. That would technically be a dual wielding weapon. So I'm gonna look at uh, and go, hey, dude, so double gauntlets is dual wielding. Yeah, that would be Ooh. dual wielding technically. Yeah. But mm. you could just have the one. You could have just like the power of the punch. Okay, in that case, I'm just going to take the entire skull and put it on one fist. There you go. There we go. There one go. punch man over here. There you go. Mm -hmm. His skull will split the heavens. So, uh, yeah, what uh, what are you guys going to do after that? Do you, do you pick up the other shit? They also had two chain Any drugs shirts. on them? Uh, no, they had two chainmail shirts on them and probably more stuff upstairs that is now covered in rubble because the floor fell down. Are there drugs upstairs? Again, you can you can dig through the rubble. There is know. no upstairs now. Just oh, yeah, I took care of that, dude. Now it's like an, an open space loft. Roll it's great. Care of is a weird way to phrase it. If you destroyed the drugs, I, I, I would say roll an investigation if you want to uh, dig on through the rubble and see what uh, what big boss man was hiding. You know what? It's cool. It's cool. We'll just carry on. I'm itching a little bit. I got the shakes, but it's cool. Let's go. Is it? 
I, I don't know if it is, man. I'm not high right now. I don't um, know if anything is. Okay, so that said, can I can I can I jack one of their uh, steel chain armors because I'm only still rocking leather armor. Yeah, totally. Point. You can grab one of their chain shirts if you want. Uh, I want the chain shirt. Okay. Again, it's it's kind of cut for a knoll. They kind of like customized it, so it's more of like a chain crop top on you. But it works. I was just, I was just gonna say, is it like a chain crop top? It like, is. It is a fabulous. I was gonna rock my crop top tonight, but I didn't. My it is a crop top. Fabulous like, chain crop am I, top. Am I rocking that eleven eighties? You're 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 looking like WCW Scott Steiner right now. Fuck yes, yeah. I'm in. I want it. NWO forever. <laughs> I love this chain. Uh, uh, big Freakzilla over here. Big Papa Pump Vorlin. So, Somebody check on him. The, uh, the, the, what is it? The man who is tied there is still going, eh, eh, he's getting sadder and sadder now. Like, eh, are you guys ever going to get me out of here? <laughs> All right, so is it, is it so, my turn? Should I, should I go untie? Yeah, let's go. Guy? Someone else while I'm raiding and yeah. bleeding out. Look, look for drugs real quick. I'm going to go take the gag out of his mouth, but not untie him. Okay, so you take uh, you take the gag out of his mouth, and you know he kind of coughs up a little bit. There. <laughs> oh, thank God you saved me. They've been torturing me for two days. Oh, God, did Skrull send you? Please tell me Skrull sent you. Oh, man, he's Ooh. really into himself. Uh, Skrull was the devil man who hired you. I know, but Corbin wouldn't remember. Oh, of course. They yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Skrull, devil guy, thinks really highly of himself, carries a bunch of knives. <laughs> you, he, he did send you, right? I'm looking, I'm looking at Corbin like, yeah, 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 totally, we remember him, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> oh, so long as you don't work for the guards, that's all that matters. The, uh, the big one, he took the package upstairs, they had some kind of altar thing there. If you didn't come when you did, they probably would have sacrificed me to their god. <laughs> Wait, would the altar now be down here among us? Uh, yeah, probably through the rubble, yeah. You, it would probably take you some time to dig it, but you could probably dig it out. Do you want to do You're that? You're not going to dig for the altar, are you? I'll dig. I'll oh. dig while you guys are doing your thing. Okay. Um, so, uh, I'm looking at this guy, mm -hmm. and he's bleeding out. I know I've only got a certain amount of time. We tried to save his life. Uh, <laughs> the package. What? Where? Where is the package now? Do you... What, Spill the beans. It's upstairs. He took it. They tried to break into it, but it's got a spell lock on it. You can only get into it if you know the magic word, and only Mr. Valor knows it. Okay, so where's Mr. Valor? Who is Mr. Valor? Uh, Valor is a uh, Skrull works for Valor. He's the leader of the Valor gang. This was his Valor, Valor gang. But yeah. I'm like shaking this guy like, where is he? Like, but no, no one it. knows, man. No one sees him. He's a fucking ghost. Skrull and the others. You got to go through them. You're no use. Um... I know, I know. Look, it's girl's <laughs> gonna kill me because I failed, man. He's killed people for way less. So I pretty much uh, am, is, I'm sick. I'm already pissed off that we came this far. I'm bleeding out. I took some damage. Mm -hmm. The guy's still chained up. I'm just grabbing him by the hair mm -hmm. and like pointing his face towards uh, Antoine and Corbin. And like, hey, keep an eye on this guy. Keep him chained up. Let me go grab this package. Mm, all right. So, yeah, you, you dig around in the rubble, and it takes you about a good 10, 15 minutes, you know, pulling, you know, pieces of wood aside and uh, everything else. And eventually you find a very fancy, very uh, well-put-together chest. It looks to be made of thick, rich mahogany with gold inlays on it and the strangest-looking lock you've ever seen. Mm. It's also got a little I just, damage and wear and tear. It looks like the Knolls probably tried to pry it open to no avail. Uh, I kind of just show it to the guys like, all right, now what? Oh, uh, it's, uh, well, do I, we need to and get I, this and, and, and I hold it up to my and I kind of shake it a little bit. Like. Yeah, there's definitely something in it. All right. Uh, S Skrull had told you when you got the package, uh, meet him at the uh, Velvet Touch Club uh, later that night. That's right. Oh, right. That place. Yeah. Yeah. Can I bat it around for a little bit? Just like for a little bit? <laughs> Absolutely. I just kind of toss okay. it to I toss it to Antoine and go like, well. And I just fucking go ape shit up, dude. <laughs> I'm just like all over it. I'm pouncing on it, batting it from paw to paw. It's adorable. Uh, yeah. oh, oh, my God. Adorable. While while he's, he's playing with it and uh, Corbin is like admiring his new awesome uh, skull fist. Mm-hmm. Like, I just kind of go back over to the guy, 
And I'm like, it's okay, man. It's gonna, it's gonna be okay. Like, we're, we're gonna get you out of here. We're gonna save your life. But while I'm doing that, I'm also just kind of patting him down, looking for drugs. Okay, yeah, he, yeah. Uh, he, he, you don't, you can't give him some kind of assurance like it's gonna be okay. Yeah. You, uh, you pat him down, and he is positively filthy. He has nothing on him. Again, uh, it's just a lot of caked on blood, probably some urine. These guys were torturing him for two <laughs> days, so. He's not okay. doing so hot. And so that's, he, that's really disgusting, and I kind of realize my hand's gross, so I just kind of, like, start wiping it off back on him. Okay. It would be uh, weirder if he wasn't caked in urine. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> At this point, but he's I'll, like, I can't, I can't ever go back to the same man. This girl's gonna kill me because I fail. I just wanted to be a gangster so bad, man. Is that is that such a crime? Yes! What? Yes, absolutely. Oh, literally the definition of it. Oh, oh, I tell you what, if you guys let me go, I'll totally start a life in another city. I'll go to Treetop, man. He doesn't have hey, to really? know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but you won't tell. You won't. You won't tell anyone about us. Pardon? No. Why would I? You saved me, man. You guys are pretty fucking awesome. Oh, oh, who would he that, tell about case, us? Like, who are we concerned that he will tell? Yeah, in that case, man, it's gonna be fine, dude. It's, it's gonna be good. And then I just snap his neck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, Thank you. Finish and, that. And, 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 you, and you can do that because he's tied up and was near death anyway. So with a crunch, thus thus ends the ballad of Flip, the wannabe gangster. <laughs> he will not be just remembered. Sleep. No. Nah. Only I, sleep now, my friend. He, yeah. He ain't coming back in the sequel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nobody did, because the sequel never happened. Yeah. yeah. All right, so yeah, you have no, your chest now. <laughs> you have the thing you came for. All righty. Uh, guys, let's get this back to uh, the the Velvet creepy place. Yeah, the Velvet, the velvet tri- Touch. The Velvet, velvet Touch. touch. All righty yeah. then. So, uh, yeah, I, I will say you make your way back the way you came, through the winding hill, uh, back down uh, over the cliff face that you had climbed up on. Uh, your horses are still kind of wandering around. Uh, kind of confused and everything. It's like, did they really leave us? Did we? Did we hear a floor collapse somewhere? <laughs> that sounded like a floor collapsing. So uh, they're there. Yeah, hitch them back up, and yeah, you ride back to town as the sun is setting. Uh, setting in the wherever the sun sets in this fantasy universe. I was gonna say the east, but I'm not sure if it's the same in Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you, uh, you you ride through the town, big damn heroes, well, kind of heroes as opposed to this world, and uh, you uh, follow some directions to the Velvet Touch Club, which you had actually seen. It's uh, it's the only building of its type in the city. Mm-hmm. Very fancy, uh, red door, lots of uh, you know, kind of nice linens and everything on the outside, nice curtain work and everything. And uh, so, what do you do? Um, alrighty, guys. So. Should we maybe not just walk in here showing off the... To stop playing with it. Stop playing with it. <laughs> showing off the chest. What? Stop playing with what? What should we do? <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is a guy who's had his dick out a lot, so I mean, you know, gotta be specific. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Barb, that's a nightmare for my hand. This, this seems like the kind of place, if you pull out your dick, they will ask you to leave. It does look yes, like a fancier establishment. <laughs> Uh, I, I look over at Antoine, I'm like, hey, dude, I need you to uh, just just kind of stash this in your bag really quickly and also put your dick away, finally, please. Okay. Can't so, believe I had to ask you to do that more than once. At first, I thought stash that in your bag meant to put my dick away, but those are two separate instructions. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Exactly. I'm on it. I put it away. Mm-hmm. And I put it away. <laughs> All right, then. So, uh, so do you step in? I don't, I don't, I just, my thinking is I don't want to walk in there just totally like hey by the way we got it like i want to sit back down and i want to really kind of negotiate try to negotiate with this dude i want to i want more answers good impression right yeah yeah (laughs) that's why i need him to put his dick away there you go (laughs) it's kind of hard or maybe very easy to negotiate with your dick you don't know how (laughs) big of an (laughs) answer if you got the swagger walk in like with the bar like that that's cool (laughs) roll for penis size everybody roll for penis size i never thought i'd have to do this (laughs) No, it's cool. I measured it in the seventh grade, and I said all those numbers. So if you need yeah. those numbers, I don't think much has changed. But dumb yeah. tish. So uh, all right. So do you step on into the Velvet Touch? Uh, guys, you feel yes. comfortable with this? Okay. And I mean, off. unless you want to like do a switcheroo or find someone in the city who could possibly override the spell for us. Yeah. 
That is that's a good point. Roll that's roll a- Arcana checks if you want to know more about the spell lock. Ooh, well, couldn't we just go to like a spell shop and ask someone? Again, you guys haven't been here for long. <laughs> only uh, only Antoine has actually been here uh, longer. Again, you guys just showed up. He's the only one who actually kind of knows where shit is. Yeah. But didn't he belong to a magic? Didn't he belong to a magic church in this town? I did to- a lot of I did a lot of mouth and hand stuff, and they I, I was a city guy. Did, I was a city guy. Did, I was yeah. going for the city. Distinction between yeah, but magic- what I'm asking is, can't we just can't we just go back to the? They know more than us. Okay, distinction between the magics in the universe and Dungeons and Dragons. If you are a wizard or a warlock, you are doing arcane magic. If you are a cleric like Josh is, your magic is technically miracles. Okay, that's why I have such a low arcana. Yeah, that's why. Okay. This but is... I, rolled a, uh, I rolled a 16, and that's plus 1, so 17 on arcana. Okay. So yeah, this this is a spell lock. It can only be opened by someone who knows the magic word. It is popu- uh, popularly used by people who are transporting shit that they don't want seen. Yes, it, but exactly. You you can break a spell lock, but you need an incredibly powerful mage to do it. And also, Antoine, because you have been in the city, you notice there have been no magic shops. In fact, it's kind of hard for you to see magic people in general in this town of Highmore, and all you've really seen is a potion shop, and that's the closest to anything magical you've seen. That's that's what we're calling me in this world. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I noticed a lack of magical people. Yeah. Now, now, if you, uh, now, if you want to do a history check to see why that is, you can. Again, you guys have been here for about a month laying low, so let's see if you actually know why that is. Sir Dungeon oh Master. Oh, my God. What did you what, roll? What's up? I rolled a 20 for history. Okay, so... Shut the fuck up! So, while living in the mountains, Corbin, and hanging out with the giants, uh, one night over Mead, uh, they told you the story that uh, back during the Crown Wars, when the uh, children of the good king uh, all fought each other for who would be the leader, the magic users of the Mage's College took no sides in the war. And that pissed off the three siblings, so ever so briefly during the war 50 years ago, they teamed up and burned the Mage's Tower to the ground and scattered most of the Mages. Now they live in hiding here in High Morin. Fun history <laughs> fact. That's oh, amazing. That, that was way... You know what's really ironic about this? What? Is that my character would not care and would not have remembered this. No, I know. Right. So I might know this, but I would not have brought up anything you just said to me to the right. other guy. All right, fair enough then. So, the so that know. all went to no one. The, the listeners know, <laughs> but they don't know. <laughs> if you guys want to make your own history checks, you can. What what are our role to go to the bathroom real quick? Uh, yeah, you can do that now, and I'll just cut this Thank shit out. Like. <laughs> yeah, you... Uh, <laughs> I, I, again, we're close to ending the chapter for tonight, so yeah, if you want to go now, we can come back and I'll end I'll it. I'll straight. I'll hold it. Let's do it. All right, fair All right. enough. So yeah, you, you enter the Velvet Touch. I'm assuming that you're, like, draping the chest in your cloak there, Vorland. To make <laughs> yeah, sure. if we're close yeah. to ending, then let's just go... All right, so you step inside the Velvet Touch Club, and as you can see, it's a burlesque house. It's a house of burlesque. There's ladies doing can-can dances. There's dudes at the bar drinking, having all sorts of fun and debauchery. And in the corner, in what you can only assume is the VIP section, you see the very familiar scarlet skin and horns. (laughs) Uh, Flex! (laughs) We're we're making it rain right now, everyone, if you can't see when this is an audio version later. Yeah, you can definitely see it. (laughs) You can definitely see it in the stream. So, yes, I'll have to do something with these video versions. I'm thinking of making these Patreon exclusives. And this is the sort of shit you're missing if you only listen to the audio version, everybody. All motherfuckers. So, yes, you you see the very familiar scarlet skin and pronounced horns of Skrull, the man who hired you to do this gig in the first place. He's in the VIP section chatting with an older woman. She's slightly graying on top there, uh, wearing a very fancy, you know, one of those big, like, hoop gowns and everything. But she's also... Hey, Springfield. Yeah, yeah, bis- exactly. It's, it's the lady from that burlesque show episode. Though she actually looks quite, like, strong, actually. She's got, like, you know, she's, she's got them guns and everything, and she also has a sword strapped to her hip, which is pretty interesting. None of the other women have this. You would probably assume that this this is the madam, this is the lady running the place that uh, Skrull is hanging out with right now, and they're drinking and laughing, they're having a good time like they're friends. So... Um. I'm not paying attention to anything, and I'm just tossing 
coins at the stage. I'm there sorry. Oh, that's... I guess it's not to us to take the chest to the table. They're, they're loving it. You're a big hit right now, <laughs> Borlin. They're not used to getting uh, such good tips like this. Fantastic. You're a, you're a big star. Yeah. I'm going to spend all the money and won't be able to cast a spell to heal myself. The, the, awesome. just, I'm just waiting for them to bring up that whole stereotype about Tabaxi's not tipping well. They're, 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 they're like, hey, hey, save some of that for the saucy puppet show that's next. <laughs> there's a saucy puppet show. Oh, yeah, there's can-can dancers, saucy puppet shows, dudes doing <laughs> off-color comedy. It's great. <laughs> It's a real happening place, this Velvet Touch Club. You can see why Skrull likes to hang out here. Yeah. That's comedy and saucy puppet shows. Yep. Everything you can expect here. So should we uh, head over to, to the main man and let him know that we accomplished the mission? That's no, up go to talk to Hellboy. Yeah. yeah. He's literally Hellboy. Holy shit. He really is. Yeah. All right, whoa, it's up to you. <laughs> Okay, so you uh, you approach him. He's sitting and laughing and talking with this lady. Uh, you, do you make your appearance known, or do you just like stand there until he acknowledges you? I would not have any tact in this situation. I would no. immediately sit down and start ordering pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, would you look at what we have here? Skrull says to you. Oh, I take it that the mission was successful. Yes. Uh, yeah, you can say I that. I will have the lumberjack special <laughs> with a side of bacon and another side of bacon. <laughs> and Wait, so you're then the dunk all bacon. of that in maple syrup. It's so you're uh, getting the original bacon, but you're also getting two sides of bacon? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Gotta keep that strength up. He worked That's up crazy. on the side. It's, uh, <laughs> it's at this point, too, the woman who's sitting next to him, he, uh, or she looks at you right now, and she opens her mouth, and she's like, Oh, you're totally right. I agree. These guys are a lot of fun. Nice to meet ya. I'm Mimi. But most folks around here call me Screaming Mimi. I own the place. I did not know that there was a Wisconsin in Dungeons and Dragons land. I was about to say she sounds like my ex girlfriend's mom, and they were from Wisconsin. She uh, she she, she kind of moves her hand around and motions for uh, one of the uh, waiters. Uh, get this man what he ordered. Get them all what they ordered. These boys worked real hard. Oh, girl was. Why is she Jamaican now? <laughs> yeah. No. She went to a car. Just get them what they ordered. <laughs> what one? <laughs> look, 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 I didn't practice this voice, everyone. <laughs> well, Why you is know. every character like awkwardly one of the other characters from episode one of Star Wars that we all speak for chat? Why indeed? <laughs> oh, you know, Skrull was telling me all about you. I love you? the song in this bar. <laughs> well, now I have to put this it. This went in. Irish. Yes. You just missed it. She went Irish. <laughs> she went from Wisconsin to Jamaica to Irish. She, she's supposed to sound Wisconsin. You know, I used to be an adventurer like you guys, too. Oh, my party died fighting a dragon. It was the worst. But, you know, by that I was barefoot and pregnant. Luckily, Mr. Skrull set me up with the job running this place. First, I was doing security. Now I'm a madam. Can you believe it? This is the worst story I've ever heard, and I have no food. <laughs> but, but, but by this point, your food comes, and it looks good. Oh, well, then I wasn't listening to her at all. <laughs> Wait, uh, all right, so my strength is running out. Can we get a plate of fries for the table while I'm gone? There you, you guys go. catch me up when I get back. Get some fries. Make some artichoke dip. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So, so again, all of that is ordered for your table, and they even throw in uh, what is it? Some uh, boneless buffalo wings, because why not? <laughs> hey, you know what? Extra ranch, please. Absolutely. Um, uh, that is that is a fantastic story. Uh, we have business to conduct. Oh, that's right. I got to get that's, back to that's work. That's more too. than just bacon. <laughs> I got to get back to work running the show too. I'll leave you boys be for now. If you need anything, just ask for screaming Mimi. And then she uh, departs, and it's just you and uh, Skrull sitting there on the table. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Skrull. Yes? What's it to you? What, what, what do you mean? The, the chest? What's it to me? Well, it doesn't mean much to me. Well, actually, it means the world to me, because it means a lot to my boss. And I want to have a good impression, and you want to have a good impression with him, too, I'm sure. Well, we uh, we were definitely looking for more work after this, and we really do feel like that we uh, delivered on the job. Absolutely. And I kind of, I kind of slowly bring oh. the chest out, and I try to make it look really impressive. Oh, but yes. one of my party guys is in the bathroom, and the other one's <laughs> eating bacon. And 
I just kind of look awkward now. <laughs> and I put the chest down. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I like how you gents work. Uh, he reaches into his pocket, pulls out a little baggie of gold. There you go, 300 pieces, as we agreed on. Now, what uh, What a flip did you find him by Did anyone else expect Josh to come running back the moment you said baggy? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, a little baggy, little... what now? No, this one has money, not drugs in it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So yes, three three hundred gold as you had agreed upon at the beginning is what he puts on the table, and then he asks, "What will flip?" Oh, uh, cool. yeah, he he didn't make it. Probably for the best. He was a weak man. We can't have weak men in our employ. And I tell you what, I'll throw an extra hundred gold in for each of you just because of that, and just because I like you. I I, uh, I think that is a very wise decision. I I assure you, you'll probably never be hearing from Flip again. Mm. Can I can I exchange my gold for drugs? <laughs> again, Skr- there it is. Uh, Skrull is surprised by this. Is like, well, I, I do have some on me right now. <laughs> I mean, you can just give it to me. I like you. I like you a lot. So then he pulls it out and he gives you a little extra baggie of drugs. For a job well done. He is hoping we can continue to be friends in the future. And uh, what would these drugs be called? Uh, it's it's more of the fey dust because the Ballers make it. Damn, I want to do a lot right now because all of that murder earlier you guys got to me, and <laughs> I just need something to settle my nerves. And by murder getting to him, he's got the shakes. Skrull Skr- sees you doing the uh, line in there, and he's just like, "Oh no, uh, <laughs> d- d- don't be greedy!" Now he uh, reaches. He's got like one of those big long coke nails. Actually, only instead of coke, it's filled with fadas. So he does a bump and joins you there, Antoine. Just so you're not <laughs> partying alone. <laughs> Technically, uh, I don't. Well, if I don't, if I'm not partying alone, he needs to put that off his nail and make a line. I'm making a line, not a bump. We're not <laughs> bump here. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't be doing this during work hours, but all right. <laughs> so yeah, he. Party. So, so he's just down to clown right now. So he he joins you in that. Hell yeah. All right. So uh, <laughs> I, uh, I I like the fact that we're partying. We're having a good time. I keep trying to shovel a little bit more fake dust. <laughs> His way. There you go. And I'm like, hey, just you know, like, out of curiosity, of uh, what did we we uh would we risk our lives for in this little thing? Oh, well, very important treasure that my boss wanted. I tell you what, you did such a good job, and because you impressed me, he's probably gonna want to be meeting you. You can ask him yourself in person if you want. Kind of look over at my crew, realize that they are both preoccupied. <laughs> One's snorting fade dust, the other one is snorting bacon. Uh, uh, no, I, at this point, I have finished it, and I have started taking food from other people's <laughs> tables yeah, and, stop, while they stop, have stop, still stop. been trying to eat. No yeah. no one stops you. They are not used to seeing such a burly mountain man. They just let you go, especially because you're also sitting with Skrull, so they kind of let you have the run of the place. <laughs> Fantastic. And, I also uh, like to grab the plate with the fist that has the hyena skull on it, <laughs> like absolutely. it's biting down on the plate. Nice. It makes me laugh. Doing all of this straight edge sober, by the way. It's <laughs> not ingested anything of like an yeah. illegal substance or anything. This is just yeah. this murderous rage. It's uh, it's at this point too. Skrull says, <clears throat> "Now I know a lot of you are outsiders here, strangers in a strange town. I'll tell you what, you can stay tonight here in the Velvet Touch on me. Everything, just put it to the Baller's tab. Mimi will take care of you, and then tomorrow I'll come and get you bright and early." And uh, we can go meet the boss. How's that sound? I'm sure he's got lots of jobs for people like you who can uh, solve problems. The dirtier, the better. Gentlemen, I I'm would like to I'm going to make pause. you go broke. <laughs> I am, I'm going to pause the game here for a moment just to talk to my crew and my players. Mm-hmm. There comes a great moment in everyone's D&D career <laughs> when you get to party in a pub. Yep. I have a career? This is that time. God, That's thank you and so much. you need to go big. Of course. Yeah. He, uh, he, uh, he, uh, he picks up the chest at this point, kind of tips his hat. He's like, well, all right, then I'll see you bright and early then. We are going to make him go broke. No, of course. Well, there you go. You're yeah. more than welcome to try. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 do I, what do I roll to watch the newest Fast and Furious movie on pay-per-view? <laughs> Just all the pay-per-view <laughs> movies. And again, I'm not even going to I'm gonna go take a shower. It's garbage. But I want to well, run it, up and it, In medieval times, I think that's you just throw some gold and some bards come and play guitar for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, in medieval times, you pay $60 and you get Pepsi and the chicken leg. 
<laughs> so yes, uh, you you yeah. party and you rabble rouse and you have a great time. Much debauchery is had, and as you are ready to go to bed for the night, you walk up the big spiral staircase here in the Velvet Touch. You see a wall of portraits. You know, lots of guests and dignitaries and important people who have come to the Velvet Touch over the years. But as you get mm. closer to the top into your rooms. There's a bit of a change that goes on there. It's less rich people and dignitaries and more like people from Screaming Mimi's life. You know, you see her old adventuring party and everything. Uh, you see her uh, with, I'm guessing, like different boyfriends and husbands over the years. But a really interesting one is the last one you it's see. It's her at New Year's, surrounded by a <laughs> bunch of other people. And she's wearing a nice suit. Looks a lot like Jack Nicholson. Just a little bit. <laughs> well, that one's definitely there, but it's the one next to it that gets you. It's her hanging out at the bar that you saw down downstairs with four young men who you realize now actually share quite a family resemblance to her and here's the thing you've actually seen these four guys before they were the guys who killed in the first campaign right they are the dudley gang is what they uh, are screaming mimi get the tables yeah yeah screaming mimi is actually screaming mimi dudley and those gang members were her children and you're staying in her place tonight even though you killed her sons I tell her that. I tell her that. <laughs> you, you can't because you know, that, 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 that that's where that that's where this episode ends. But you can do it. Next time. I'm gun under the table like in Glorious Bastards. I'm like I killed your son. <laughs> I just keep it down there. She's like, oh, you gave the wrong three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's on that note, everyone, that this uh, part of the adventure comes to a close. So uh, thank you, everyone. <laughs> That's a great cliffhanger. Yeah, cliffhanger. I can't wait until next episode when Josh ruins it and tells her. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm gonna sleep with her. I'm gonna sleep with her. Mouth stuff and hand stuff is my speciality. <laughs> I can ease the hurt. There it's you so go. So uh, yes, thank you everyone for joining us. Sorry about that technical difficulty that happened there, but I thought we saved it. I thought we did pretty good. Yeah. And we had at least eleven people watching it this whole time, so that's pretty cool. Thanks, chat. We appreciate the yeah, support. Yeah, yeah. So I guess. Yeah, thank you, chat. Yeah, so I guess I'll just note everyone, unless anyone has anything to plug or anything else to say, I will bring this installment, this session of Capes and Quest to a close. Guys. I'm the only one who imagined us in surgical face masks the whole time, like, because I'm still <laughs> adhering to rules. I like, we so. all had. We were all walking like six feet apart from each other. <laughs> My mask is on the other side. <laughs> no, we're a bunch of sociopaths and villains. We're walking around just not even caring about any of this stuff. Uh, also, we're also, going to the Mayo Clinic with no face preparations or anything. <laughs> also, with all the drugs Antoine has done, I mean, coronavirus ain't going to affect him. Yeah, yeah, he's immune. I want to live to do more drugs, <laughs> all right? I have to. Who's got uh, stuff to tempt out? Yeah. Now, uh, now would be the time. And again, it's it's really only for the stream people because I'm probably going to edit this out later for uh, what you call it for uh, shortness. Sake. Audio, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at Josh the Sandwich, uh, and that's pretty much what stand up is for the foreseeable future for most of the human race. Yeah, it's sad, but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Kirk Thorgy, what do you guys got? Uh, you can go to Thorgy's Arcade on YouTube to find our gaming channel, because that's actually doing really well at the moment. Oh, uh, yeah. Last time we did this video, I said, hey, I'm going to put up a Marvel vs. Capcom video. That's doing better than anything I have done in years. Oh, that's good. Uh, oh, yeah. And the yeah. channel has, like, doubled in size in a week. Uh, so I'm just going to promote that for the time being. Uh, we have the Resident Evil 3 review coming up this weekend. The next weekend, we got the Final Fantasy 7 remake review coming up. Somewhere in there, we got Streets of Rage 4 review coming up. And then we got part two of the Devil May Cry. No, not Devil May Cry. Of the Marvel vs. Capcom video going up. So that's like our month uh, is all going to be over there. Wicked. That's a full one. Uh, uh, the Kirk FM is all the socials, especially my Twitch channel, which I just finally reactivated last week, two hey, weeks ago. Yeah. Been doing quietly doing videos. Uh but let's see, earlier this week I had a just kind of like a 30-minute cocktail and talk about uh, Silver Surfer Parable that was by Stan Lee and Mobius. And I just kind of kind of show you some of the art, talk about it's the 30th anniversary and what it's all about. So it's just kind of like a nice little casual cocktail and conversation about comic books. Go check that video out. Um, also, I game with my crew, the Garbage Brigade, uh, who I thought were the worst gamers in the world until <laughs> I... Uh, <laughs> I think you meant the best there. gamers in the world? <laughs> no, we're, we're fine. 
We are we are amazing now compared to this. <laughs> we're on another uh, plane. Can, we're alive, we, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> so we do uh, Garbage Brigade. It's just literally three three of my friends and I. Uh, we, we were doing Call of Duty, but the reason I really love it is because we're like really non-toxic players. You're not going to get like a lot of people yelling at you. And all four of us are old good friends that are just nerds. So while we're gaming and we're getting really good conversation going, we'll sometimes just talk about like the newest episode of Picard or whatever we were talking about while we're playing. Um, also, I'm really excited because somehow all four of us got beta test codes for Spellbreak by Epic Games. Oh, killer. So we're probably hmm. going to start doing some videos just streaming and trying that game out and letting you know uh, what we think about that later this week. But yeah, I'm kind of like a casual variety streamer. Right. And I just talk comic books and game with my friends. You so, guys have so, so ahead much of... going on. Because uh, <laughs> I, I, I have nothing going on now. I, uh, I, I got um, more of those digital DC videos coming out. Those are pretty fun, even though the numbers aren't really there. But I'd rather review some comics than review no comics. Uh, got Harley Quinn and Clone Wars uh, tomorrow, which that will be good. That's right. I'm excited about that. Th thank fucking God for Harley Quinn. My channel might have shriveled and died if not for covering that it's show. It's so fucking good. It's so it's good. Really it has is. no right to be that good. I'm, it really I'm doesn't. insulted at how good the Harley Quinn cartoon is. It, it, does well, better, it does things better than the comics do in a lot of regards. Oh, God, like, yes. Like, she was a character made for TV, so of course TV is going to be her natural yeah. medium. Yeah. Absolutely. Totally. Yeah. I didn't think Hold about on. that. You're right. Uh, what else do I got? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, check that out, everyone. And uh, thank you for hanging out and watching the whole stream. Really appreciate it. Uh, our goal is to try and do this not next Thursday, but the following Thursday. So, you know, hopefully we'll see you there in case, uh, you know, nothing horrible happens. Or if the world reopens by then, you know, you never know. <laughs> hey, who knows? Yeah, yeah. goodbye. From we'll be, we'll be closed up a week yeah. after that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm ending the stream right now, everyone. Hey, we're, we're reopening on tomorrow that's right i forgot your state is different and here i am in canada a nice word to say Different's a nice word to say very very dip well well good luck with that and i hope you can make it a thursday from now yeah that'd be awesome yeah. i'm not going outside at all so yeah i'll be here the uh the role of josh will be played by <laughs> the other one the other josh there you go all right everyone bye-bye